favorite that represents me is my little reindeer chihuahua that we have named Vader. And uh, he's, a, he's a great dog. So thank you, everyone, for being here. I'm glad that you're here because I was really worried as I was driving here. Um, I had to send out the event, and I didn't do it right. And so people had tried to pay, and they got a closed remark. And, it was just a big mess, and so I'm thinking, great, we're going to only have 11 people show up. I'm going to have to go across the street, get some homeless people in here to fill up these seats. So I'm glad that you're here. Um, I want to talk about this morning about God's design for business. And, uh, you know, I think uh, it's important to know exactly what God's purpose is. But before I start that... I just want to say that um, I want to talk a little bit about who I am. Some of you know me, executive director, and others know me as the state representative uh, for District 26. I come from a background of various traits in my family. I was raised in Louisiana. My uncle was the sheriff in a small uh, place called Randile. My grandmother was the dispatcher there. Um, my cousins, I had uh, many cousins who worked in the cotton fields and shrimp boats, and uh, my mom was a mom who traded her domestic lifestyle for one for combat boots, so we traveled quite a bit. And I come from a very long line of hardworking men and women in our family. I was raised to love this country, to love our family and to serve our God. I've had the opportunity to serve this great state along with serving many of you in the business community, and it has been an honor to be able to serve in the 50th legislature, and we did amazing, amazing things. Um, the state serves a purpose in our society, but just as much as the state has a purpose in our society here in Arizona, you also have a purpose as a business. In fact, it's more than just a purpose. It is God's design. And God's design for government, okay, is simple. It's to punish those who do wrong and to reward those who do good. But government has fallen from God's original design, and we see the results of that. The same for families. When that original design of what God intended for a family goes away, then we see the results of what happens. We see a higher divorce rate. We see abuse in our families. So what is God's design for businesses? Businesses have a very important role in our society. In fact, you may have more of a role in society than you may think. And if you are one that outwardly expresses your faith to others, then your role is even more important, and you are held to a higher standard, not just in God's eyes, but in our community. And I want to speak with you this morning about your role in your business and how important your role is to our, our community here in Tucson. I truly believe that God calls and he equips certain people to business in the same manner that he calls apostles and preachers and teachers and pastors. And despite what our president may say, that you are only in business because government gave you that opportunity, is falsely wrong. Business people are a key to the development of the kingdom of God. And as the kingdom expands and grows in any certain area, church growth is inevitable. Church leaders sometimes uh, tend to focus on growing their church rather than the kingdom of God, and oftentimes businesses feel left out. Deuteronomy 8.18, it says, And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers, as it is this day. And the scripture reveals the true purpose of the wealth to establish God's covenant in the earth. And wealth, and lots of it, really is needed to further 
5,000 who had gathered to hear him speak? Well, the disciples had asked Jesus if he expected them to go into town and purchase enough food for all of the 5,000. Now, if they didn't have enough money to do it, I don't think they would have asked Jesus if that was what he wanted them to do. And there was so much of an abundance that the money Judas was stealing from the ministry wasn't even missed. That only Jesus was aware of his actions because only he could see Judas' heart. And there are many examples that I could give. But the enemy of our soul has perverted the truth of prosperity. And by withholding finances from God's people, the advancement of the kingdom has been greatly hindered. And with the blessing of prosperity, you can be a source of funds or skills to the church and to our community. You can accumulate wealth and, and provide jobs for the unemployed. And there are worthy purposes in themselves. And he wants you to be in business so that you can take ground for the kingdom of God and extend that over your business, over the marketplace, and over your community. And the comfort should be that God works with you in your business. Even in the beginning, God worked with man. Work is a part of God's original design. God himself worked in creation and continues to work, both sustaining and redeeming his creation. Man worked in partnership with God. The creation of man in Genesis 1.27 is immediately followed by God's blessing and the assignment of responsibilities. We are told that God planted a garden in Eden and put Adam in the garden to work it and to keep it. God created and sustained and mankind stewards or gives care to God's creation. However, God also continued to partner with Adam in a practical level. In Genesis 2.19, we are told, God had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Adam walked and worked with God. Work continued, as we see in Noah. God didn't just drop an ark from the sky. He chose Noah. He gave him the specifications. He told him to build it and to gather every type of animal. And when Israel was in Egypt, God didn't deliver food from the heavens when famine came upon the land. He had chosen a man named Joseph years earlier to plan, to prepare, and to store up food for the salvation of Israel and all the earth. But we have this thing called sin, which doesn't just exist in our own lives, but it also exists in the marketplace. And it hinders God's kingdom greatly. We can see the root of sinful problems in the civil and legislature, which govern the conduct of business in our society, establish the codes and regulations and laws. We see poverty around us, the extent of abuse. Contrary to the 20th century economist Milton Friedman, who said the purpose of business is to maximize financial profits for shareholders, the Christian business should work in partnership with God to sustain creation, promote the kingdom and its virtues, and listen, and repair what sin has broken. Business is one of those loving structures provided by God in which we can join together, working with God to establish these ends. And because of the constant interaction that you have with the community, you really are on the front line of how society perceives Christ. But I want to talk just a little bit about that perception. In the business world, we are deceived by false prophets, and in the church, we are abused by false prophets. Many businesses today use God to use God as an automatic stamp of the reputation of their business. As if automatically putting a cross or saying that they're a Christian in the window tells the public without any 
to give me some insight on this issue about the perception. And I just want to disclose that there is not a business here in Tucson that, it, that I'm going to be talking about <laughs> at all. So one of them said, I had lunch recently with the CEO of one of the largest Microsoft software consulting groups in my part of the country. The guy is an industry veteran and a solid believer. And somehow we got onto this topic and he, was, he surprised me by saying, I won't do business with any professing, professing Christian company. And when I asked him why that was, he told me that once the other businesses finds out that he's a Christian, they take what he called extensions of grace. He explained that it could take the form of not paying on time, not delivering work when promised, or asking for a fee or labor reductions without cause. R.C. Sproul, one of my favorite uh, preachers, he had stated the other day, on this topic about Christian ethics. And he said, when talking about um, when talking about Christian businesses, he said, I have to say that oftentimes I don't like doing businesses with Christians myself. He says that it always amazed him how many believers order tapes from his ministry and never pay for them. Here's another one. We had a house built some years ago by a home builder that went to our church. In fact, the guy played guitar in the worship band, and I can still picture him in my mind singing worship hymns in front of the entire congregation with his eyes closed, praising God. The fact was, he was ripping people off by building faulty homes, one of which my friends had contract contracted um, with him to build. That the job was so bad that the local housing authority wouldn't allow us to even live in it. Here's a letter from a pastor who was a former business person concerning his experience with Christians in business. And he stated, if I want my car repaired, my house repaired, renovations, any of the trades, etc., except for the rare exception, I would never use a Christian person. And at one time I did as a way to help each other out, but in 99% of all cases, workmanship was poor at best. Punctuality was non-existent. Consistent attendance at the job site was virtually non-existent. Follow-up to finish details would take months. He said secular businesses are tough and they hammer out the deal, but they almost always follow through to the end. And Christians were nice at the beginning, but turned sour as time went on. There is a well-known businessman who is a member of the Pentecostal church, and he gives large sums of money to his church, and he supports a lot of other charities. However, among his many business interests, he owns a magazine distributing company that is the largest distributor of pornographic magazines in the city. And when confronted about the apparent contradiction, he simply stated that he does not allow his Christianity to influence the decision he makes in business. And perhaps that may seem very small to you, but both Christians and non-Christians alike remember them, and they do have a lasting impact. But how much greater impression do these stories have on our community concerning our business when studies show the divorce rate is nearly the same 
able to anoint 